In this lecture of introduction to astrophysical fluids, I will mostly discuss of the general perspective of studying the fluid dynamics with respect to a rotational frame of reference. Okay. So, the title is of course the dynamics of an astrofluid in a rotating frame. Now, it is true that the first question comes to our mind is that why it is at all important to study the fluid dynamics of an astrophysical fluid in a rotating frame of reference. Well, the answer is very easy. For example, all the, I mean almost all the uh, astrophysical objects like the planet, stars, accretion disk, galaxy, they are rotating as we already discussed in the last lecture. Now when an astrophysical object undergoes solid body rotation, for example, there, I mean for example uh, for the case of a slowly rotating star as we uh, mentioned last time, right, that they are, yeah, I mean due to the turbulent viscosity they have uh, always the tendency to switch from a state of differential rotation to a solid body rotation. So for this type of case, the study of fluid dynamics for a phenomenon which is taking place on that object, okay, this study gets analytically much more simpler if it is studied from a co-moving frame. That means a frame which is exactly rotating with the same angular speed capital omega okay so and this is true what happens that some particle which is just moving for example if let's say something is uh, rotating some uh, body is now rotating like this along this axis and uh, it's it's um, performing a solid body rotation then some body which is at rest i mean let's let's say is stuck on this uh, body so if we uh, we are seeing from lab frame or some ex external frame of reference then this body still has some acceleration velocity this type of thing but uh, with respect to a frame which is co-moving with this uh, object this body is nothing but at rest okay so you see that i mean considerable simplifications can be uh, can be brought into a consideration uh, if we just talk in terms of the co-moving frames okay here when we are talking about co-moving it's actually co-rotating frame okay now this technique is also useful even the body is rotating with a differential rotation for example sun it should not uh, rather it, it need not move with a constant angular speed but if let's say the system is moving with differential rotation then let's just choose some uh, reference frame which is moving with the average uh, angular velocity or angular speed of the system that actually can also simplify um, the problem enormously okay now for our study which we will uh, discuss in the mostly in the next lecture we will uh, consider the assumption of incompressible fluid and ideal fluid. Why these two assumptions? So incompressibility assumption should come because we want to get rid of rho and the thermodynamics part. Okay. So uh, even if you have a barotropic closure type of thing, you, you are st still thinking of the thermodynamics. So here we are very um, simplistic and uh, of course if you want to do something more general you are um, i mean encouraged to do that but for the scope of this course we are just using this simplest case okay incompressible and why ideal fluid because first of all this is a very reasonable approximation for an astrofluid and uh, because the i mean the viscous effects are in most of the cases they are negligible even in case of uh, the slowly moving stars where you can actually use this, um, I mean, where you can um, use the concept of this solid body rotation, you know that this is the 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 uh, net the effective viscosity which causes the solid body rotation is not the uh, viscosity 
which is considered in the navier stokes equation it's not the molecular viscosity but it is the turbulent viscosity although i have not introduced the concept but uh, i i will introduce that but as an information you know this from the previous lecture i mean from the last lecture okay so these two will uh, i mean will be you these two assumptions will be used for our uh, study okay so now the navier stokes equation for this type of system can simply be written like uh, we can write the equation of a particle okay in in uh, with respect to a non inertial frame of reference now from your high school uh, i mean from your uni undergraduate physics course of classical mechanics you should know that the some ddt in a inertial frame is equal to ddt in the non inertial frame plus omega cross so that is the where omega is the i mean here we we will of course use not the omega just a minute so ddt is in the inertial frame is equal to ddt in the non inertial frame plus the omega which is the angular speed of the uh, of the frame of reference cross this so this equation uh, relates the ddt of any vector in the inertial frame to the ddt of the that vector in the non inertial frame and here it will be simply a okay so if you just use the same thing for this fluid thing okay and then you can also write navier stokes equation equivalently just uh, inserting the effect of this non linear i mean sorry non inertial or the rotating frame of reference so del v del t plus v dot nabla v will be equal to minus gradient of p by rho plus g this is the body force this is the uh, i mean the viscous effect eta nabla square v minus these two terms would come in addition so they will be just the pseudo force okay so one is called the coriolis force so this is uh, given as minus 2 times omega cross v so this is actually coriolis acceleration okay if you write if you multiply with the mass then it will give you coriolis force and so this is also the same thing for centrifugal force so this is centrifugal acceleration omega cross omega cross r with a minus sign as well and you you can easily see that uh, this 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 whole thing is actually uh, nothing but the newton's law written with in in a uh, rotating frame of reference okay now this term is uh, of course gets vanished when v is zero so v is nothing but the fluid velocity with respect to the rotating frame of reference so if something is stuck or is at rest with respect to the um, i mean the rotating frame of reference then for that coriolis force will be zero but centrifugal force will still be there okay now uh, how to further simplify this type of thing so one one very uh, simple and but very useful mathematical identity is that you can write minus omega cross omega cross r is equal to half of gradient omega cross capital omega cross r mod square so you can write this thing as a gradient of something okay so and uh, so this is my uh, request that you try that at home and you can hint this uh, formula or you can use any other method but one possible thing is that you can actually write this thing as this and then from this you just write uh, simplify i mean expand this uh, thing in this way but well you can do in any other ways you can use also the i mean the Uh, summation notation and the, this i mean the index notation okay whatever but try to uh, i mean try to obtain this equation this is fairly easy okay now if you uh, if you admit this one then your final uh, evolution equation for the velocity or actually the evolution equation for the momentum should look like del v del t plus v dot nabla v is equal to minus 
divergence uh, gradient of p by rho minus gradient of phi minus half the mod omega capital omega cross r whole square plus eta nabla square that is the laplacian of v minus 2 omega cross v now you see i said that i am assuming incompressible and inviscid fluids but here just for this part i have not yet done any simplification okay this is actually general compressible fluid with viscosity okay the only thing here i have assumed is that the body force is of conservative nature so that is true for gravity you know so we can write this as a gradient of a scalar potential phi so finally this uh, if if you note if you notice this carefully the centrifugal acceleration term is inject is inserted okay inside this gradient of this phi term okay so now you have a gradient of phi minus half om capital omega cross r mod square so if you call this phi minus this thing as phi effective so basically at the end of the day your centrifugal acceleration does not do anything other than modifying the resultant gravitational potential or your body force potential right so if i just say that i am in such a system where the gravitational potential is much larger than this part then already the centrifugal acceleration is neglected okay then uh, so that's exactly what i said and then uh, one one should not be one should not really worry about the centrifugal acceleration and that's exactly the case for arcs rotation where this modification due to this rotation is fairly negligible because the rotation is fairly slow okay now for coriolis force this is no longer true this has a non trivial role and but coriolis force comes into play only when the fluid has a relative non zero velocity with respect to the rotating frame of reference that's i just said some minutes ago so in order to understand whether the coriolis force plays a significant role in the motion or not we have to compare this uh, term in front of or with this nonlinear advection term advective term v dot nabla v okay so we just compare their magnitude order of magnitude why this term because if you see this equation when the fluid uh, i mean when the fluid is uh, is having some non zero relative velocity other than this one okay only this term and this term will be remaining but this one is unimportant for most of the astrophysical system so this term and this term these two should then be compared this term is also the same case but this is also once again so uh, i mean del v del t is something which is all which which can be vanishing even for a steady flow even when v is uh, non vanishing okay but these two okay uh, actually sustain i mean these two actually remains non zero when there is a non zero v so these two are very very uh, i mean identical type of nature of course one is non linear one is linear because omega is almost constant at least omega does not depend on v here at least in our problem so uh, we can compare these two okay if we compare these two finally we define a dimensionless number because both of this term and this term they have identical dimension okay so if we divide the nonlinear term by the rotation term finally we will have roughly v by omega l so v is the characteristic velocity of the system l is the characteristic length of the system omega is the constant rotation speed of the system okay and this dimensionless number actually is known as r0 or rossby number okay 
now you see that in this whole uh, treatment i have not said any uh, i mean until this point i have not said anything about the constancy of omega but once again the thing is that uh, if omega is constant then this type of i mean uh, then this type of analysis becomes much more simpler with uh, i mean uh, simpler if we place ourselves in a co rotating frame so uh, that that's why I'm saying now if Omega is uh, is uh, I mean not really explicitly depending on time then Omega uh, can be just thought to be constant and uh, for that case Rossby number is given by this but if let's say Omega is a function of time itself then there is no problem so this then there will be an explicit time dependence of the Rossby number because of the explicit time dependence of omega that's that's the only difference i mean the the expression of the rossby number would not be changing okay so whether it's true that i mean during the, uh, the the explanation several times i am just saying that omega constant but actually omega need not be a constant okay uh, that is the thing so, uh, what is now the meaning of Rossby number? So, of course, you can see that when uh, Rossby number has a large value, for example, greater than or very, very greater than 1, that means that the nonlinear terms greatly dominates the Coriolis force term. And what is the meaning of this, where uh, Rossby number is less than 1? That means the nonlinear term is less than the Coriolis term. So in this case, in this case, nonlinearity wins. In this case, linearity actually the rotational properties win is winning. Okay. So of course, uh, in this one, so uh, for laboratory experiments, okay. So for laboratory experiments, you can actually see this row zero greater than one because the uh, I mean the Coriolis effect due to the earth rotation is not important. So now we are talking about that the for example if you are doing uh, some research i mean some experiment in your lab okay now the question is that would your experiment be affected by the earth's rotation well you just calculate the rossby number for that corresponding to the earth's or capital omega if the rossby number is very very large then you say that I don't care about the rotation of the earth. If the Rossby number is of the order or slightly less or less than 1, then you have to take the effect of the earth's rotation into account. Okay, and that's exactly the case where we are studying the fluid flows for the geo, uh, I mean geophysical, uh, geophysical entities like atmosphere, the oceanic flow, etc okay so here you can see that uh, r0 less than 1 simply gives us the instance where we are talking about the large scale motions in ocean or in atmosphere okay so uh, once again a highly high rossby number simply says that the suppression of nonlinear effects by rotation this this uh, piece of information is specifically important for the people who are um, who are interested in studying turbulence fluid turbulence i have not yet introduced but just to for your uh, information fluid turbulence under some effect of rotation so let's say you have a container uh, containing some fluid and you, you rotate the system so if the rotation is very fast if the rotation is very slow how mm, does the uh, i mean uh, turbulence will be affected so v dot nabla v is somehow a measure of the strength of the turbulence because this is the non-linearity part and you know that from maybe your uh, previous knowledges that um, turbulence is nothing but a measure of the non-linearity strength of non-linearity okay of course there we talk about another dimensionless number called Reynolds number here we are talking about uh, talking of the Rossby number okay so in the next discussion we will uh, discuss some important um, properties or theorems uh, and their eventual modifications in case of the uh, rotating frame of reference there will be actually the first i mean the first one will be the 
modification of the Kelvin's vorticity theorem and depending on that secondly I will discuss a very important theorem it's called the Taylor's Proudman theorem which is uh, very very interesting for both our laboratory experiment and for large scale geophysical and astrophysical flows okay thank you Thank you.